Hi, we're Laura and Lewis. We've been loving our Shape Oko CNC and have made some fun projects recently. One thing we need to improve on is nesting designs to minimize waste. In order to reuse the scrap aluminum, we made this electric foundry to melt scraps into an ingot that can be machined again. We started off with 10 insulated fire bricks. There are a few different types, so you want to be sure to use soft fire bricks like these larger white ones. They have better insulating properties compared to hard fire bricks. We arranged the bricks to create a simple box to house the crucible, allowing it to be loaded from the top. We cut two bricks in half lengthwise to fill the corners. These bricks are very easy to cut in shape, so we just used our old Japanese pull saw to cut them in half. Next, we measured three evenly spaced lines from the floor of the foundry to the top rim around the perimeter of the inside. This marked the three rows the electric coil will sit into. Laura used a square file to create grooves into the bricks and used a scrap piece of the electric coil to ensure the correct depth. Meanwhile, I bonded the walls together with furnace cement. Once grooves were made and walls were bonded, we set them aside for a couple of hours to let the cement cure. Next, we drilled the holes for the electric coil heating element, inlet, and outlet. The final walls were bonded together with more furnace cement to complete the structure. We measured and cut one inch angle iron to fit along the outside corners of the foundry. This will help keep the structure secure and minimize pieces breaking off when moving about. The bricks are very brittle. Once the angle irons were cut to size, we TIG welded all the joints together. To keep things simple, we made lap joints rather than mitering the connections. Moving on to the electrical portion, we used a PID controller and a solid state relay, thermal insulated wire, and a K-type thermocouple that reads 0 to 1300 degrees Celsius. To house everything together, we 3D printed an enclosure and mounted a toggle switch and an electrical outlet we salvaged from an old computer power supply. Everything we used is linked in the description below. We wired everything according to the directions of the PID controller and left two long pigtails that will be connected to each end of the electric coil. We bolted onto the metal structure of the foundry using nuts and bolts. We later found out that the structure gets a bit warm and softens the 3D printed enclosure, so having an insulated layer like wood would be helpful. We made sure to connect the ground wire to the mounting bolt so that the structure can be electrically grounded for safe operation. Then we measured and drilled a hole for the thermocouple. The temperature is picked up only one inch from the tip of the thermocouple, so we wanted to position this area closer to the floor of the foundry to get the most accurate reading. We made a small arm with a bit of adjustability for the thermocouple to mount to. After that was mounted, we closed up the enclosure.
Using steel wire coil as the heating element, we calculated a resistance of about 9 ohms to give us enough power without overloading our 20 amp circuit. In order to coil around the foundry three times for even heat distribution, we calculated that we need the coil to stretch out to about 78 inches. After using the bench vise to help pull the coil, we placed it into the grooves. We straightened out leftover steel wire and shaped staples with a plier to help secure the heating coils to the wall. Then we attached the ceramic terminal block and connected the wires from the controller. After that, it was ready to fire up. It was so exciting to make our first ingots. If you learned something new or simply just enjoyed the video, please consider sharing the video and subscribing. Thanks. Thanks for watching.